Make sure you grab a cool compress. Your face is about to be on fire, itching like none other. And the last thing I want you guys doing is scratching your pretty faces. Today, we're gonna be talking about everyone's favorite freak, the Demodex mite. Yes, face mites. Don't be scared. Demodex are actually part of our normal skin microflora. They are normally there. It's normal to have them. It's normal to have them until it's not normal to have them, meaning you have too many and it's causing facial rashes for you. Many common everyday facial rashes concerns are aggravated thought to be caused by an overabundance of these little face mites but don't you worry a thing today we're going to be talking about why this happens and importantly i'm going to be covering the go-to skincare products that you might want to have in your arsenal to tackle these little buggers once and for all demodex live in our pores we actually have two of them one's real short and the other's a little bit longer it's thought that we're colonized with them at birth but with age they increase in number they're found everywhere but they're most dense on our face where we have a a ton of hylosebaceous units, aka pores. They're really abundant in our eyelashes, our eyebrows, around our nose. They feed off of secretions from the sebaceous gland and the meibomian gland in our eyes, as well as dead skin cell material. They come out at night to move around and eat. They emerge from our follicles to snack on our dead skin cell material, but bright light prompts them to return down deeper in the follicle. Why might you have too many? It's thought to be related to a variety of factors, namely your immune system, System, as well as, well, your background genetics. Inflammatory responses against Demodex can be the contributing factor for either overgrowth or these skin conditions that we're going to cover. But if you happen to have a baseline immunosuppression, maybe because you are on a medication that suppresses your immune system, or you have a condition that weakens your immune system, that can make Demodex a lot more comfortable. And as a result, you may have too many. What constitutes having too many Demodex exactly? Is there a number? Why, yes, there is. An ideal ideal number of Demodex would be less than five mites per centimeter squared of surface area. One of the more common issues related to Demodex actually affects the eyes. It's called Demodex blepharitis, inflammation of the eyelids around the eyelashes. This can result in meibomian gland dysfunction, and you get this sort of buildup around the lash base. That buildup can cause mechanical injury that irritates the eyelids and the lash line. Another fun fact about Demodex mites is while they only come out at night, they appear to be a bit extroverted, and they're always hanging out with a couple of little bacteria bacteria that are stuck to them. And these bacteria that live on the Demodex mites might actually be more of the pressing issue for what causes facial and eyelid issues. Because of Demodex's involvement in meibomian gland dysfunction, it's thought to actually be a contributing factor in the development of dry eye disease, which is quite common. What about your face? Demodex are implicated in several facial dermatoses. Rosacea, seborrheic dermatitis, pterosporum folliculorum, and periorificial dermatitis. How do you know if that's what you have. Well, you have to see a board certified dermatologist and it can be diagnosed using the combination of clinical manifestations, meaning they look at your rash. They may also need to take some skin, eyelash, eyebrow, hair samples to evaluate for how much Demodex you have in these given areas. But what can you do to get rid of this problem? Like I said, Demodex are part of our normal skin microflora and you don't want to completely eradicate anything that is normal human flora, but you want to get those numbers down. All right. You want to drop it down so that that, that little bad boy is not making your life miserable. Number one thing I recommend that you do is, sounds pretty simple and you're probably already doing it and you're like, okay, great. But you need to be washing your face. Washing your face doesn't kill the Demodex, but what it does do is exfoliates away dead oily debris that Demodex, guess what, would otherwise pop out of your pores at night and go to town snacking and munching on. So make sure you're washing your face with a mild cleanser. Also, make sure you are washing your eyelids very gently with a mild facial cleanser and your eyebrow area. Make sure you're lathering up in those areas as well. A lot of people, myself included, when we wash our face, we rub the cleanser on our forehead, our cheeks, the sides of our face, maybe our upper lip and rinse it off. But we often fail to wash our eyelids and our eyebrows. So make sure you're washing in these areas as well if this is something that you struggle with. If you're already washing your face once a day, you might consider trying washing the face twice a day to help cut down on the burden of Demodex. Now that being said, that being said, people with rosacea, washing the face twice a day starts to get into the territory of possibly being more disruptive to your skin barrier, and ultimately that will worsen your symptoms. You need to be washing your bed linens at least once a week. Washing your bed linens, your pillowcase, it's a game changer for this issue because that debris that sheds into your pillowcase at night from your face into your bed, you can actually re-inoculate yourself with more Demodex the next day. So it creates a problem. You also want to be 
washing your linens regularly as a side note because, well, hello, odor and hygiene, but when you allow for the dead skin cells to accumulate in your bedding, your linens, guess what else likes to snack on that? Dust mites. And dust mites are another little sneaky snake in the facial redness irritation, especially if you have atopic dermatitis. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about the freaky deaky demodex. Now, when you see the dermatologist, they give you this diagnosis. They might actually prescribe you a course of an oral antibiotic such as doxycycline. Doxycycline and other antibiotics, they have anti-inflammatory effects, which are going to be beneficial for reducing the inflammation that is caused by the demodex taking over. But remember that little pesky bacteria living on the demodex. The antibiotics can help eradicate that and help cut down on this issue for you. Also topical antibiotics, topical minocycline foam, for example, is prescribed to people who have rosacea. Part of how it may be beneficial in those cases is to a certain extent by doing something with demodex inflammation or the little bacteria on demodex. Also topical metronidazole is another rosacea go-to. It's an antimicrobial that might also help with the demodex issue going on here. These are prescription only. Topical ivermectin, frequently used to treat rosacea. It goes by the brand name Cilantra. That's another one that actually will directly reduce the burden of the demodex mites by killing them. It paralyzes them, ivermectin. Topical ivermectin paralyzes the demodex mites, killing them off, helping the condition out. Cilantra, topical ivermectin, is prescription only. But a lot of people have stumbled upon ivermectin lotion in the drugstores that is sold over the counter for the treatment of lice. And they're wondering, is this something that could be helpful for these sort of facial eruptions that we're covering here? It's not a go-to recommendation to use the over-the-counter lice treatment version. Remember, that is largely meant to be applied to the scalp for the treatment of lice, and it can be very drying and irritating to the skin, which for people with rosacea might just be a little bit too much, might aggravate the skin too, too much. People do try that. It's not something I necessarily recommend. If you're going to try that, just remember it's meant for the scalp. It may be way too drying, way too irritating on the face. Instead of that, what I suggest is topical sulfur. Sulfur can help cut down on the demodex and it's anti-inflammatory. It's a great treatment for rosacea. It's a great treatment for seborrheic dermatitis. It can help periorificial dermatitis. It can help acne, which we're not really talking about today. And it can help pterospermum folliculorum if you figured out that that's what you have, which is a dry dandruff. It can be a bit drying too, but definitely a very effective option. Because demodex thrive on dead cellular debris, in addition to washing your face regularly to exfoliate that, consider, well, incorporating an exfoliant. One that I think is really smart to choose is a salicylic acid exfoliant. Why? Really do a good job getting down into the pore to exfoliate. And it's it's that buildup in the pore that Demodex is really snacking and munching on. Creates a bunch of stuff, barfs, and it wreaks havoc. So use salicylic acid to essentially put the Demodex mites on a diet. All right, you're going to cut down on the dead cellular debris in there with the salicylic acid. Salicylic acid can be too irritating though for people who have rosacea or periorificial dermatitis, but it can be pretty helpful actually for people who have seborrheic dermatitis, especially if you use it in the brow area. Along those lines, Adapalene. Now Adapalene is an FDA approved acne treatment that you can buy over the counter without a prescription. You may be wondering an acne treatment, a retinoid, what? This is a bit of an indirect benefit because it's not going to directly attack the mite, but Adapalene over time with consistent use helps to normalize skin cell turnover, the surface of the skin within the pore, ultimately leading to stratum corneum compaction, less stuff for the mite to snack on. And adapalene has anti-inflammatory properties as well. Now, adapalene can cause a lot of irritation for people with rosacea, but it's not off the table. If your rosacea is such that you get a lot of those little bumps, adapalene can be really good for that actually. And ultimately over time, really help rosacea a lot. Check out my video on how to introduce a topical retinoid with no irritation, like a super conservative approach for people who have the most sensitive skin. That's you with rosacea, because I give a lot of tips and tricks in that video on how to have success with topical adapalene if you have very sensitive skin. Along those lines, topical benzoyl peroxide. Oh, shocker, another acne treatment. How might it be beneficial here, especially with rosacea? Isn't that drying and irritating? It certainly can be. That's why I suggest using a lower percentage strength like 2.5, or in the case of seeing your dermatologist, they might even prescribe you the newer encapsulated benzoyl peroxide that is FDA approved for rosacea. And why might benzoyl peroxide help in the background of overdoing it with 
with the uh, presence of that little mite. It does help exfoliate the skin, cutting down on the food for the mite. It's not directly toxic to the mite, but it might help cut down on that little bacteria on the mite. And it has anti-inflammatory properties as well. Another treatment that can be helpful for rosacea, periorificial dermatitis, all of these things is topical azelaic acid. Azelaic acid is antimicrobial and it gently helps to exfoliate the pore. And a lot of people who use topical azelaic acid, they report that their skin is less oily, less shiny, less greasy. It's not clear as to why because azelaic acid doesn't necessarily target hormonal signaling, which is what leads to more oil production at the level of the sebaceous gland. But nonetheless, azelaic acid use does appear to reduce the subjective feeling and appearance of oily skin. And ultimately, you know, that might help cut down on more of the food that Demodex likes to snack on. Plus, azelaic acid often is pretty well tolerated in people who have rosacea. The prescription stuff is FDA approved for the treatment of rosacea. The stuff that you buy without a prescription is a cosmetic. It may help too, and it can help cut down on the redness. Here's one that might come as a surprise to you, tea tree oil. Now, before we go any further, tea tree oil is an essential oil. Do not, do not, do not ever buy essential oils and put them directly on your skin unless you want to get a horrible, horrible, horrible contact dermatitis. They have a lot of compounds in them that are quite concentrated and can be very irritating to the skin. But compounds in tea tree oil have actually been shown to suppress Demodex's ability to emerge from the follicle and are a go-to recommendation for the treatment of Demodex blepharitis. Rather than buying tea tree essential oil, and either, of course, don't put it directly on your skin, but a lot of people want to, you know, mix other oils with it to try and dilute it out. I don't suggest doing that. It can backfire. It definitely can backfire doing that. So I don't suggest that. Instead, buy a product formulated with tea tree oil. Much less risky. That being said, it's not zero risk. Tea tree oil, even in a well-formulated skincare product or shampoo, can still cause contact dermatitis because there are a lot of different compounds in tea tree oil that can be sensitizing. So keep that in mind. It's a bit more of a riskier route. But a product I suggest actually is Head & Shoulders, which is a dandruff shampoo. They make a Head & Shoulders dandruff shampoo that has tea tree oil in it. So that's the one I suggest. In addition to tea tree oil though, it also has zinc pyrithion. So for those of you guys out there with seborrheic dermatitis, tea tree oil not only can help cut down on the demodex, it also has been shown to be helpful for seborrheic dermatitis. You have this shampoo that is meant for the treatment of dandruff, which is seborrheic dermatitis in the scalp. You can actually use that shampoo as a face wash, especially using it in the brow area around the nose where you're getting those flare-ups of the red greasy skin. You got two ingredients in the shampoo that can definitely help out your cause in an evidence-based manner. There's also a bit of research suggesting that Manuka honey may be as effective as tea tree oil for Demodex. A little bit more challenging to work into your routine. Um, a while back, I did a whole video on the benefits of Manuka honey for the skin. It's really sticky, but that's something that if you're motivated, you might try. All right, guys, that's what I wanted to talk about today with regards to Demodex and the issues that they cause in terms of facial eruptions, eyelid blepharitis, and what it looks like. So hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. Now on the end slate, I'm going to put one of my recent videos all about eyelid dermatitis, eyelid eczemas, eye opener, that one would be to watch next. So grab your popcorn and tune into that so that you are educated on all things eyelid rashes. But if you guys like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.